Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. So I've been talking about greater levels of freedom and peace, and I'm going to talk today a little bit about how baggage develops and then how it is maintained and perpetuated. If we understand these things, then it's easier to like unload it. So before we get into today's episode, I would ask that if you're enjoying these principles that I've been sharing, would you consider picking up one of my books on Amazon? If you've been listening to my podcast, you know I have two devotional books, one called Sheep Hear His Voice and one called Insights into Faith, a workbook also called Life Without Baggage that will help you find greater emotional freedom and peace, a Bible study, and two books that will help you with personal coping and understanding distortions and understanding yourself. So consider picking up one of those for yourself or a friend. So let's get into today's episode. So I'm taking this material from my book called Life Without Baggage. The podcast was named after the book. And I'm talking about how different toxic emotions develop. So there's experiences, attitudes, expectations, and choices. And this is taken from page 15. So if you're watching the video episode of this, you can see the um, diagram as I talk about this. Uh, If you're just listening, uh, I'll still go slow enough that you'll know what I'm talking about. So emotions, good or bad, come from experiences. The more difficult experiences that we have, the earlier in life that we have them, the more that there is going to be, I guess, tendencies, you could say, towards having difficult emotions, intense emotions later in life. If we have a lot of positive experiences and mostly feel loved and secure and protected, then it might be easier to manage your emotions as an adult. I don't find a ton of people (laughs) that have simple backgrounds But these early experiences sort of create the grid for how much sadness, fear, anger there is to try to work around or work through and how solid your sense of self is. So I've been talking for the last year probably on strengthening your sense of self, strengthening your coping skills. So these are all things that anybody can work on. So don't get discouraged if this is your first episode that you're listening to and you feel overwhelmed. I have lots of resources, the videos, uh, previous podcasts that teach you how to help yourself move forward in any of these areas. So we start with experiences. Now, of course, people are the most concerned about the negative experiences because no one's concerned about being overly happy, right? So our experiences influence the attitudes we have about ourselves, about other people, about God, about life. So let me give you an example. Uh, Generally, when I'm working with clients, I do a lot of work examining what their relationships were like and how the dynamics operated between their parents 
and then between their parents and various siblings and themselves. So if, if in your home, boys were valued and girls were not, and if in your home, your dad had a problem with alcohol or anger or drugs or some, some other addiction or intense difficulty, and if in your home growing up, your mom ran interference for dad, made excuses for dad, or was afraid of dad, then there's a good chance that your view of yourself, if girls were not valued, is that you are not valuable. And your view of other people is probably that you're going to have to work around whatever garbage goes on in your home or your relationships. And your view of life may be that it's normal to have someone in your life that sucks the life out of you and controls everybody else by their moods. Now, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes people flip to the opposite extreme, where if, again, let's say that you're a boy, a male, and your mom was over the top crazy, violent, uh, verbally abusive, then maybe what happens is you develop an attitude, you maybe even make a vow. No woman is going to treat me like this again, or nobody's going to boss me around. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. So in that case, again, we're all different. Our reactions to what we observe, those negative experiences, they can vary a lot from person to person. But we develop a view of our own value and worth, we develop a view of how to interact with other people, how much you put up with, whether they're equally as important as you, whether they're more important than you, whether you can trust them, whether you can get any of your needs met, and then kind of what to expect from life. So again, the more positive experiences we have, the more that there were mostly harmonious relationships, then it's easier to kind of manage when life throws you a curveball. Whereas if you've had lots of chaos and lots of disruptions and lots of disappointments, then the well of strength is not as strong. And that's where I always encourage people, you know, to develop your faith, because that also will help you to draw on the strength that God can give you so that you're not just dependent on what you can muster at the time. And any of us can be overwhelmed when too much happens, no matter how great your background was, no matter how strong you are. So these experiences, as I said, lead to attitudes about ourselves, about others, about God, about life. Those attitudes develop expectations. So if I expect to be loved and accepted, I probably won't have a ton of anxiety when I go into a new social situation. If I was treated like I was smart and competent when I start a new job, I'm probably not going to be overly concerned about succeeding at that new job. But if I had a lot of negative experiences, then I approach each new, uh, each new situation with the expectation that maybe I'm not going to be good enough, maybe I'm going to be rejected, or maybe I better be ready to fight because I'm going to have a lot of aggression coming at me. And so people can actually create conflict when they go into a situation expecting a fight. So these expectations then influence our choices. Maybe we choose not to try new things because we expect to fail. Maybe we expect people to uh, do wrong to us. So maybe we're going to do wrong first. If we expect life to go well and expect that we are competent to handle situations that come up, then we might be more open to trying things that are new, that are different, that will enrich our lives. And we will choose to set boundaries if we value ourselves and know that I deserve a certain amount of respect and I don't have to keep investing myself in people who do not give me that respect. And I can do it in a pleasant way. I don't have to meet negativity with confrontation. I can just calmly 
draw my boundaries. So if we tie this into the idea of baggage, experiences in life that we didn't have any choice about, or sometimes if we made a bad choice, then there can be some difficulty, some baggage that we are carrying with us that makes life harder than it needs to be. And if we expect negative things and we react negatively or use excessive avoidance or get into addictive behavior to manage things, then we're going to be adding to our baggage instead of letting go of baggage. And again, the more that you can use your faith, the more that you can use your supports to ask somebody, uh, am I seeing this right or am I overreacting? And if your friend tells you the truth and says, no, that's bad, you need, you need to do something, then you draw a boundary, you have a conversation, there's ways to do that. If your friend says, that was okay, I, th I think you're being too sensitive, then you work on how you talk to yourself. And I've talked a lot about that in the last few months, how to watch how you talk to yourself, change your self-talk. So if you understand how our experiences create attitudes, our attitudes impact what we expect, and then our expectations often influence our choices, whether we try new things and move forward, whether we manage our emotions and move forward, whether we set boundaries or whether we just repeat um, unhealthy cycles. So again, this is from my book, Life Without Baggage. This was page 15. And so let me pray for us. Lord, I thank you that no matter what we've been through, that you give us the courage, the confidence, the peace to look at what is happening to unload toxic emotions, to take them to the cross, that we can take our attitudes, that we can take our fears and concerns to you, that we can ask you for wisdom, for decisions we need to make, so that we can release people that we need to forgive and release, that we can be wise about whether or not that we trust people, and that we expect good things from you and from life. To, that we can learn how to cope and move forward. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time.